You wanted it, and so here it is, the big log manifold shootout in comparison. Before I even get into this, I just want to say everybody I worked with on these, um, you know, including Summit Racing, big corporation, <clears throat> everybody's real helpful, but especially a shout out to uh, Dirty Dingo, uh, great name by the way, everybody loves that name, Dirty Dingo. Um, so... Dirty Dingo's been super helpful. Uh, the owner there, I forget his name, really nice guy. He's building a couple of these 64 Novas. Um, and then the guys at Trick Performance. I mean, super willing to help and modify and, and try to help you with what you're doing with, with turbo projects. So Trick Turbo, Dirty Dingo, great guys. So anything I'm gonna say on this video is not a dig on them. They're, they're great people, they make great products, they're hard workers. Um, everything I have to say is just about this project. So I'm not dogging anybody, I'm not putting anybody down. Uh, I'm just coming at it from a perspective of this is what I'm working on. I have to make everything fit, I have to make everything work. And so it's not a, um, a pro or a con. Everybody, all these products are really good. It just depends on your application. So, so with that being said, we'll launch into it. This is the Dirty Dingo um, log manifold they came up with. It says Action Speed Shop. I think he mentioned to me he had a couple different welders involved over the years. He's actually getting out of the business. He's selling the remaining uh, pieces that he has and in, in getting out of it. Um, so let's just start with this one. I mean, I have not mic'd it yet. Uh, it, I believe it's probably offers the, the most amount of flow out of all the manifolds we've got here. I'll confirm that and give an update, but I can tell you just based on the, the tubular appearance, the, the, you know, the, the thinner gauge wall with the bigger diameter, this is a more of a fab look. It's not as cast looking. And, um, I do believe this would offer the most flow. I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost certain of it. So they've done something interesting. They've, they've created, you know, a V-band setup uh, and it, it has a swivel on the end, a T4 swivel with a V-band. So that allows you to kind of move the turbo around. On this package, you know, I'm liking where we're coming down here. I'm, I'm close to the frame rail, but in the camera, it's a little deceiving. I can probably miss the frame rail. Um, I can probably taper down to a smaller tube, hit this V-band flange, avoid the frame rail, and uh, and hit my you know my crossover pipe there, and I can probably make this work pretty easy. Where I'm going to stumble is is on two two points here. One is um, the the turbo location, right? It puts it awful far forward, and then what am I doing about a um, about a uh, air filter for this? You know. Uh, I know that's not a primary concern of a lot of turbo guys. It is of mine. Um, I'm going to be driving this around on the streets, uh, putting some miles on it. And so, you know, I do care about an air filter. And this is not, I'm, I'm pretty far forward here with this. But that's, that's not a huge deal. We could, we could come up with something. We could make something work. What bothers me is this wastegate. Now, why they put... The wastegate bung here is beyond me. The only thing I can think is that you would swivel the turbo really far out or really, f well, you can't go far in on much any application. So I guess the idea was that you would swivel it really far out and run your three and a half, four inch, you know, down pipe off of that. And, um, but the problem with this is, you know, with a wastegate here, or if I ran a 90 degree adapter and did one of these deals, as you can see, you know, there's just not much way to clear. You know, even if I put a one inch spacer under that turbo, we're still very, very tight on, on clearance. So I, I don't know if this setup would, would work. I really don't. I'm gonna have to look at it closer and, and get back to you and let you know. I might be sending this back to these guys. Um, Coming over here, uh, I'll give you a rundown of the others. So here's the hooker, and, and by the way, hooker Holly, I always have to say that, um, Holly the hooker. This is the driver's side, right? So you got your driver's side bank, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna stay with this and run it, and then your uh, 4L60 crossover tube. 
purchased separately, different part numbers. So here is your, this is what you would run on the uh, passenger side. And what it is is you have a, a collector that is gonna dump out uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of, of this area here and it's going to be tight and then <clears throat> you're going to have to snake up basically how this one is. I mean, you're going to have to kind of come up from a little bit lower and get up and then you might come back and then, you know, make the turbo go higher. And then somewhere down in here, you could do a wastegate provision, right? And you're getting close to all your accessory drive and your, your cooling fan and everything else. So I'm really not a fan of, of this for this car. Now, in terms of performance, you got a 53 millimeter inlet and you have a 71, uh, uh, almost 72, let's just call it, collector on the end of it. Um, which the inlet doesn't much matter to being smaller on this one because what it's doing is it blends the logs together and then they hit the collector. So, so this is really just supporting driver's side. And um, so, so that's the hooker, you know, deal, Holly hooker. Um, here's the Summit one, really nice piece. And you'll notice this is like a cast iron material, obviously cheaper. This is cast stainless. This is um, actually really nice. And here you have a 54 millimeter inlet, which again, we can, we can be okay with that because we're only taking... Um, uh, passenger uh, driver side uh, gas and pushing it in here and then up in here uh, there's another venturi that um, you know takes your uh, passenger side and then brings it into your into your deal here so so the inlet's 54 no big deal uh, slightly larger than the hooker um, when you get inside you 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 slim down a lot right because you're carrying this log over and, and you see the other elbows coming in to stay in the bottom log. So um, it, it, the flow right there, obviously, you know, reduced, right? Um, and then the other thing is your T4 flange popping up, 75 millimeters across and divided, right? So you have this, you have this piece in here. So you have two ports that are basically flowing independently into the turbo. So not a lot of gas flow here, right? It is balanced, which is really nice. And you have your, um, you know, your 46 millimeter wastegate flange right here. Um, this will not fit well on the car. Um, and so we're probably not gonna run this one. We wind up hitting here and then our, uh, our downpipe is like right on top of the frame rail because these are too long coming out of the cylinder head. So that is not an application for this car. Probably more of a bigger front end car or truck uh, SUV type thing. This is the Amazon Special. I believe it's made by a company called MMI. They, I think they have Michigan roots, but I, it's probably made in China. Um, this is the best value uh, manifold. Um, you know, I would say in terms of the, the most engineering work in construction, I, I might say the, the Summit or the, um, the Dirty Dingo. But in terms of bare bones, I want a cheap manifold to get a turbo on my vehicle go buy this. It, it's on Amazon. It's 200 bucks. I mean, look at this thing. Yeah, it's not great. You can clean it up. You can put some high heat paint on it. It's got an O2 bung. Um, you got a 64 millimeter inlet coming in. Uh, pretty impressive. And you got a 73 um, millimeter T4. And, and when I say that, I'm measuring, you know, the widest point. Um, but look at it. It's kind of like tapering down like crazy right after you get inside so that's you're, you're losing some flow there obviously um so the the big thing the big problem with this one i might have run this on this car big problem what am i doing about a wastegate right i want to try to have it on the manifold and not get it before the turbo i just don't really have the room in this car to get it before the turbo once i mount it on there i don't have enough hook clearance and then the crossover pipe coming underneath. I mean, there's it's tight, and I'm not a fan of the thing under the car. You know, I want it in the engine bay. So, so that kind of rules this one out for me. And and yet the last one here, um, Trek Turbo, we're dealing with a 63.84 inlet, so almost as big as the Amazon Special, 
And, um, and if you look inside, you know, nice big flow, boom, you know, right up in there. And then, and I'll show you the Amazon too. You know, again, you know, good amount of flow. Um, but the, uh, the trick turbo, you'll notice that the, the logs coming down off the, uh, the exhaust ports, nice and big, you know, these a little bit smaller, right? And then check this out, 76 millimeter T4 full flow flange, right? So compare that, I'm not a great camera guy, but check this out. Compare that to that, right? I mean, big difference. Big difference in flow, okay? When you're not, when you're carrying all the exhaust through one tube and getting it up to a T4 like you're doing on these, um, whereas these, you know, again, are, are blended logs, two separate logs, two separate logs, you know, you're, you're able to move more. There's more pipe here. It's a bigger, you can see top to bottom, it's a bigger unit than these, right? So real important that, you know, you got to try to maintain flow. And so the trick does the job, and uh, it also has a wastegate flange on it. Now, on this vehicle, I've got, you know, two issues with this one. One, I've got a flange here instead of a V-band. I, I kind of like a V-band, and I, if, if I had a V-band right here, I think I'd be good to go on this manifold. I can get the crossover pipe to hit this and work. The wastegate flange. This I can get to work, but I'm going to be putting a hole in this um, fender well liner for the top hat of the wastegate to pop through, or I'm going to be, you know, spacing this out away from the frame rail down there, and then I'm probably getting close to hitting the tire on a turn or something. So um, for me, uh, the guys at Trek are telling me, right, they want me to send this back to them, and they're going to put a V-band on here for me. Um, maybe even give me a little bit more of a hook down because that, that would ha help me a bit with my connection. And then the 46 millimeter wastegate flange, we're talking about locating it over to the front because if I'm over on the front, and let's just pretend it's in here, then my wastegate is over, you know, in this area. And I, I got plenty of room right here, right, to jump off of the wastegate, like if it's here, for example, and I can then get up and over to the four inch pipe that's gonna be coming out of here and, you know, dump my exhaust gas in there. Um, and, and there's other ways to do it too, right? I could, I could run, you know, a pipe up over here and, and hit the four inch on this side if I want to stay away from the valve cover and everything. So I think this trick thing is going to be the way we ultimately go. I'm not done of doing this evaluation, but in terms of performance for, you know, this style, I think, you know, flow wise, it's probably got the most flow and, uh, you know, between that and the hooker manifold, I would say uh, either one are in the same performance category in terms of exhaust gas flow. One of them is giving you a T4 right off the manifold, whereas the other one you're having to do some work to get you to a T4. Now, let me advise you of one other thing that I, you know, I have learned over the years with turbochargers. You know, wastegates and back pressure can get a little bit tricky, right? And um, controlling turbo speed, right? So a lot of people don't know that about this stuff. Um, and I've actually had turbos um, over boost because of this. And then I've had to, you know, make modifications. Well, one thing about a 90 degree wastegate flange like this, it's not recommended, okay? And I'm not, again, I'm not dogging anybody. This thing may work. There, it may work great. There may be guys that are out there that say, oh man, I have that thing, it works fine. But what happens is you get all this exhaust gas flowing very fast past this flange. You can put your finger in here. There's nothing stopping the gas from just going straight that way. It's kind of like the old water pipe thing. You know, sometimes you can remove a fitting off a water pipe that has water shooting through it and it doesn't even come out of the hole on a 90, right? So um, it's the same type of thing. Now, if you come over here and you look at these other ones, look, we got another 90, right? There's no, there's no angle on that. That's a 90. But check this out. The guys over at, uh, at Trek, you know, I think they're, you know, they understand 
the situation, right? And if you look at this and you study it, most people wouldn't catch this, but they're actually catching the gas on the upflow, which is what you want to do, right? It's like a flowing river of water. You, you want to, you know, you want to split it off, right? So not only does this help for packaging um, in the vehicle, but it also allows the exhaust gas to um, take a path of least resistance over to the wastegate. And that makes the wastegate much more effective. So that's another thing that I like about this manifold. And um, my hope on the relocation is that we can do something very, very similar to that where we, we have material that kind of, you know, builds up to it and, and flows it towards the, the wastegate on an angle rather than a 90. So, so that's the big update. Um, we're planning right now to run the stock LS3 manifold. I know people are going to laugh at that, but go online, do your research on an LS3. There's not many manifolds that outperform the LS3 manifold, including all the aftermarket ones. So all these big money Holly and Brian Tooley's and uh, Eldebrock and all the other ones that you see. Go online, read around, watch the dyno shots, and you'll see that this manifold in that lower RPM range, which is what I built this motor for, um, outperforms all of them by as much as 50 foot pounds of torque. Um, and, you know, basically same horsepower all the way up to like 6,500 than some of the other manifolds pull away from it. But I'm not revving this motor that high. It's supposed to be more of a down low, you know, torque monster. And, you know, where you live most of your RPM life anyway, and most vehicles besides a drag car is always in that, you know, three, 4,000, 5,000 range. So this manifold um, outperforms them. And hats off to GM Engineering because they probably spent a lot of time figuring out the long runner profile on it and made it work. So, um, oh, one other update. I'm trying not to make this too long, but the, um, the Holly Dash adapter for the screen, we got that in. And just so you can kind of see fitment on this, um, it's definitely not perfect, okay? So there it is in the dash. And, you know, it fits the curvature pretty good. Um, I'll move it over slightly. Just, okay, so it's more like something like that right there. It barely covers the hole. And then look at these upper corners. You've got gaps right through there. So I don't know why they tooled that that way. Um, I, I'm not quite sure, but it's definitely not a perfect fit. So we'll be we'll be tweaking on that a little bit and uh, trying to make it fit a little bit better and um, maybe look for something down the road to fit it, fit it even better. I don't know. Oh, last thing, Dirty Dingo. Um, really nice little setups here. We've got the low mount um, AC compressor mount. The back of the bracket um, hits on this block. So uh, just so everybody knows, that is a problem. And, um, you know, will need to be trimmed. I'm, I'm not gonna send it back to them and jack around with that. I think I can do some grinding, some manipulating and, and ultimately get that to, to snug on there. So that hits. And then this bracket uh, did not fit this compressor. I had to open it up slightly on the vise and then it fit. Um, and then let's see, you've got your uh, power steering pump mount, which takes a GM pump, which is nice. And then you've got your uh, low driver side alternator mount, um, which is also a nice piece. And uh, you've got your low tensioner for your uh, AC compressor and your idler for your alternator. And then of course a different uh, balancer will be going on this along with uh, water pump, which also has a couple water pump spacers to get it out to the, this, the throw that you need on the balancer that we're gonna be using. So, in a nutshell, um, that's the big update. I don't think anybody else has ever done this with these log manifolds. I hope I help people out with that. And, um, uh, yeah, so any questions you want to know before I start to uh, narrow down which one I'm going to use and probably send the other ones back, let me know. I can uh, measure. I can uh, give you anything else you want to know on them. And uh, hopefully it's helpful. All right, goodbye.